from the article that I have with me that I received from them. So I'm just going to read the introduction so that you guys have an idea of what exactly is it that we're going to be talking about. Now, according to a stats as a mid-year population estimate, um, a report released on in July 2019, young people aged between 18 and 34 comprise almost a third of the population, that being 17.84 million in South Africa. 9,04 million of which are males and 8.80 million being females. Yeah, well, this, yeah, this hectic. Now, clearly, the opinions of young people in the country matter and the future will be determined by the extent to which the society is able to address their hopes and fears and deliver on the promises made to young people for a better life in the future. Now, with that being said, I'm going to bring Mr. Mzondile Banjatwa into the conversation so that he can further extrapolate as to what does um, youth and corruption entail within this context. So, good evening, sir, and welcome to the network. Good evening, and good evening to the listeners. Thanks for, for having us once again. Yeah, man, we, we have to have you guys. You're our only hope. We don't have a choice. We have to have you on the show <laughs> one too many times. Look, man. Look, if you think we only hope, think again. I mean, the platform that you provide for people, I mean, it's a great platform for them to to air out their views and also um, hold leaders to account. So uh, we are together in this. We are together ah, in this. I mean, Aluta continua, and then the struggle becomes easy when there's partnerships, so two is better than one. I agree with you. Let's just get straight into the conversation. Um, so does Corruption Watch have a focus on young people and why is this important to your organization, uh, particularly where, where corruption is concerned, on the part of young people, we, just to be specific? Um, so our engagement with young people um, across the country has been a continuous thing. I mean, since 2014, uh-huh. um, we have been consistently engaging young people, from young people in high school where we host um, debates with them, um, as well as um, integrity dialogue with university students. Um, I mean, we even went as far as writing various short, producing short, short stories, which are aimed at um, young people, and uh, even partnered with with one of the local artists, yes, the Black, on a, on a song called Iba Sile, which is loosely translated as um, "They are They are Wicked." Um, so this was. Um, this was in in response to the rising tide of corruption in our country and uh, those being in power who have been implicated mostly in corruption um stating that they are the ones who are, who are actually wicked so we we understand that uh, a shift um to, to actually shift the corruption scale in our country young people play a very important role and um have to be active in in the fight against corruption now we engage young people because we understand that um, the youth, which we have, as, you, as, you, as you rightfully stated in your introduction, between the ages of 18 mm. and 34, comprises the third of the population of our country and should have direct interest in ensuring that um, there is good governance and accountability in our country. And also, uh, the, the, the clearly put, I mean, because the future um, of, of, of young people depends, depends on it. Um. Let's bring it more on a more realistic base now. Um, I, I personally, growing up as a kid, I, I'd like to think of myself as not a young person anymore, although I look young. But that's not the point. Now, uh, we, 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 we often uh, associate certain other things with a certain age group people type of a thing, right? Where mm-hmm. issues like corruption... Um, as young people, we are not mostly bothered by that. Um, could be because of various reasons, such as uh, we are still young, dependent on our parents. We we are not affected much. Uh, we still have food. We still have shelter. We still have you know basic stuff. And and we where corruption is concerned, it's mostly an adult people thing. You know, um, would you say that young people in South Africa? Are they equally as concerned um, with corruption as do, you know, the adults? Because we normally would see, you know, parliamentary um, figures being the ones chanting the anti-corruption. Uh, we're going to bring down this and that because of whatever. Do you think that young people are equally as concerned uh, around corruption? 
Look, young people are very concerned. I mean, through our engagement with young people, um, we we have noted that um, um, young people are both concerned about corruption, but they have also normalized um, a pattern of, of corrupt behavior. I mean, for example, um, the recent 2020 um, African Youth Survey highlighted uh, South Africa South African youth, rather, as um, as concern about a number of issues, and now these issues range from sexism, racism, democracy, and the environment. However, the two concerns for young for, for the two concerns for young people in South Africa are unemployment and corruption. Now, this also coincides with the perception study um, that we have conducted as Corruption Watch, which mm-hmm. also found that the majority of participants are extremely concerned about the state of corruption in our country and also believe that it will it will get worse in the next five years. Now, if you link this, this issue of unemployment, then you find that in, in our in our in our survey, a number of young people are unfortunately willing to actually pay a bribe in order to get um, jobs in the future. Now, despite the, the youth compromising a third of our population, mm. close to 50% of these young people are actually unemployed. Right now, this highlights the desperation of young people who will engage in illegal activities in order to get access to to an income and an opportunity to participate in the in the economy. Now, similarly, um, um, for those who who do businesses, we know that the plenty of young people who are entrepreneurial um, who mm-hmm. enter into the business market. We find that unfortunately for them, um, it's often a case where they are compelled to actually pay a bribe to either get a job or secure a job for their company or, or actually expand their, their their businesses or for their business to even spend a chance to survive. Uh, now, on the other hand, um, we know that young people have stated initially that they have actually normalized this corrupt behavior. Mm. And this tends to be in, in, in how young people tend to condone uh, corruption. And sometimes young people tend to make excuses for these for these corrupt behaviors. And actually at times, which is very disappointing, at times you find that young people, some young people actually celebrate um, of co- corrupt corrupt leaders and look up to these um, corrupt leaders. This has been a very huge concern for us, of course, in the country at large. Now, when it comes to buying uh, the cold drink, as, uh, the buying of, 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 of driver's licenses, that has been a huge issue that has been mm. coming to our attention. And uh, paying this con- cold drink money, uh, as, as, as it's called, mm. um, to avoid consequences. Now, at the engagement with young people in, in Cape Town, um, most of the participants participants there noted that they even budget for for their bribes. So, for example, um, when they know that they will be going out and they might be drinking, they would save or set aside two hundred to pay a police officer should they be pulled over uh, for drunk driving. So, we have an issue as South Africa where young people are often forced to engage in corrupt in corrupt. Um, activities in order to access jobs, but also we have other young people who choose to engage in this behavior um, if it ben- if it is beneficial or helps them in avoiding consequences. On that very same note, what would you say is the underlying impact that corruption has on 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 on, on young South African people? Um, in your view, what would you say that? Um, I, I mean, like as you stated, that when it comes to avoiding consequences and taking responsibility of certain actions there there, there are immediate mm-hmm. doorways you know escape goes to any tough situation where taking ownership of one's responsibilities consent particularly for their own actions um paying a co- uh, imagine cold drink money seems like a very cool thing to do um and mm-hmm. it, it doesn't look like it has um long-standing repercussions which could be having a massive impact on someone else in the future. So what would you say are the underlying impacts that corruption has on South African youth? Um, so the one of the biggest impacts that um, corruption has on young people is issues of access, right? Um, access to education, um, access to employment, access to business opportunities. So that has been the biggest problem that we have been finding. For example, we've been receiving over 3,000 reports about corruption in, in our primary and secondary schools since 2012. Now, the majority of these reports highlight how school principals and often um, 
held by school governing body members have lined their pockets with money that were meant to, to be used in providing quality quality education for South African children, right? So, and, and, and unfortunately, the COVID-19 pandemic has further highlighted the poor state of many of our schools mm. um, who are who don't have proper facilities and learning materials or even um, essential services such as running water and sanitation, right? Um, And that tends to impact on the quality of education which young people tend to have. We know in South Africa we have a huge dropout rate where young people tend to drop out of of, of school. Some are because of those underlying issues um, in, 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 in in their schools. And um, most of those young people tend to be lost outside of the system. These are young people who find themselves involved in crime and criminality and violent acts and so forth. And some of them find themselves having to to suffer the, the, the plight of, of drug or drug use or drug abuse. Now, most of the whistleblowers have told us about how money meant uh, to, to improve classrooms or buy textbooks were actually stolen or how um, the union engaged in, in, in systematic uh, patronage to mm-hmm. dish out teaching jobs to, to some of their members. Now, the many children who, who are going, going hungry because uh, some of the school feeding scheme are mud in, in, in corruption um, or, or the money that was supposed to be mm. uh, meant for school feeding scheme is being, is being misappropriated, right? Um, and we also know that this goes as high as um, the higher institutions of learning where we find that there are allegations of corruption um, leveled against uh, some of the NSFAS, um Official. So it means that the other young people would apply to, to for this funding, but they would either not get it because of some of the corrupt officials. So it tends to impact on young people, on the quality of education that they get, and also prospects for the future, either employment or um, starting their own businesses as well. But it also also messes up with our democracy. It undermines our rule of, of, of law as well. Mm. Interesting, interesting point you you were mentioning there around democracy, um, which leads me to my next question. Um, with regards to the 1976 youth, um, well, one thing mm-hmm. that we can learn from them, from, from from that group is that they were radical in 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 demanding the change they they deemed themselves to be deserving of, and they were actively mm-hmm. involved in 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 fighting for for the realization of the desired change they deserved. Um, what would you say is the importance of young people to be actively involved in the fight against corruption, thus securing themselves a brighter future? So, um, look, I think we have to, at all times, um, complement the youth of 1976 and look up to the youth of 1976 because these are young people who sacrifice their lives to ensure that we are where we are and we are able to live the life that we are living. Um, um, of course, the lives that we are living, uh, we are living as well are marred with various challenges. And it is our responsibility as young people to also deal with those challenges and raise our voice um, where where we see where we see um, inequities happening um, mm. throughout our country. I mean, so for example, when you when you when you look at our recent history, right? As young people, um, there has been various various. Um, um, various campaigns that have been that have been waged by young people mm. um, from the Arab Spring, um, in 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 which started in in in, in Egypt, um, which saw a, a regime change, um, to the Fees Must Fall movement that that was started here in South Africa, to the Roads Must Fall movement, which is now an international movement, yeah. um, to the Black Lives Matter as well, which is now an international movement that that seeks to. To, to make sure that black people are on are recognized and are um, are treated fairly um, and with dignity throughout the world. So young people have that within them. I think what we need now is to also channel our energy to to anti-corruption as well. Um, so I, I I think 
young people have a lot, a lot, a lot to do uh, because the future is 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 ours now. As it stands, so for example, uh, politicians and those in power are literally stealing, um, stealing our future as young people, and we have the duty to change uh, the corruption narrative in our country. Mm. And um, if we allow the mass looting of, of public funds and um, and we don't demand accountability in both the public and the private sector, we will inherit a society that is more unequal and more unjust um, than the one that we're currently living in. Um, as young people, as the youth, we have to invest in our future, and uh, we, we, should, we should start by, by, of course, committing to principles of anti-corruption and demand accountability and, transpar- and a transparent state and ensure that our society um, becomes a, a just and equitable one. Interesting. Now, before I let you go, um, uh, uh, as per our previous engagements, we we have been made privy to the reality that a lot of um, people in South Africa, um, since COVID nineteen hit us, sure, have been um, subjects of, of 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 unfair practices within the workspaces mm. and all of that. Mm. And what corruption? Um, I mean, what COVID nineteen has done, amongst other things, was to um, further expose most corrupt um, practices within various companies and various places of, 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 of labor, um, thus leaving the vast majority of South Africans um, um, vulnerable, thus leaving vast majority of the South Africans frustrated and feeling helpless and, 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 and having a sense of losing um, their voices in, 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 in society, particularly in the workspace. Because um, there's been a lot of issues that surfaced um, where corruption is concerned in workplaces, you know, and and, mm-hmm. and 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 in my little experience thus far, I've I've noticed that a lot of people don't know where to run to 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 to, to, mm-hmm. to seek help and assistance where 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 issues around corruption is concerned, particularly in the workspace. Um, what 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 services can they get from Corruption Watch, and how can they go about? accessing those particular services. All right. <clears throat> Thank you very much. So um, this is the biggest concern that has been um, mounting for a very long time. And um, after the conversation that we have we had with you, I think about three weeks ago, um, mm. we, we have been getting these, um, these, these reports from, mem- from members of, of, of the public. And mm. uh, we are... We are in the process of uh, dealing with some of those matters and engaging with with, um, with, with various stakeholders in this particular matter. But mm. this has been a very huge and problematic problematic issue on two counts. The first one is that it undermines um, it undermines processes that have been set up by government, and secondly, it tends to it tends to impoverish the already impoverished mm. um, people which are the, the, the marginalized in, in, in society and who form the majority of, 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 uh, of our country. And uh, when, you, when, you follow, when you follow these, these um, when you follow the news, you find that in, in, in one of the addresses given by the Minister of Labor, mm. um, he stated that about 113,000 companies have actually either registered people who are not on the, who, on the database. Actually names of people who are not on the database, mm. people who are not being registered for UIF. Um, but those people, of course, claim that um, the company has been deducting these monies for UIF. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but now when it's time for them to get the relief, it becomes a problem. And, the, and, and amongst those people, some of the company, some amongst those companies, some of them now will find that they have, mis- actually, they have actually misappropriated those funds, they misused yes. these funds, but some of them have outright stolen the funds that are meant for, uh, for the relief of their workers. So um, we are in the, pro- in the process of, of um, in about com- coming with um, 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 a solid intervention into these, into, these, into these matters. And again, I think I should thank you for, for your platform because it has also um, shone a light on, on what is happening. Because in, in most cases, we as an organization would not necessarily know about these issues if it wasn't for platforms um, like yours and if it wasn't for members of the public as well. All right. Thank you so much, Mr. Banjato. I will touch base again the next time when we are uh, permitted by those that are powerful than us 
to speak, but <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for taking time to enlighten us. And I hope a lot of young people have received some words of wisdom there and, and have now a sense of awakening to the realities that are literally in front of us, actually even on our doorsteps, and be actively involved in making sure that we, we, we chant a song of change by being active um, 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 contributors of such. Thank you so much, and uh, we'll, we'll speak to you some other time. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time. Sir. Awesome. All right, that was Mr. Banjato from Corruption Watch. And uh, he's shared some powerful insights where corruption is concerned, particularly on the part of young people. And just a quick reminder from Corruption Watch, here's what they've got to say to you, that corrupt COVID-19 has got a grip on South Africa, keeping our hands clean will make a difference in fighting this virus. However, this is not the only virus that needs to be defeated. Corruption Watch encourages everyone to keep their hands clean and report also any corruption and the exploitation of vulnerable people during this period by reporting any corruption related matter case to corruption watch on corruption watch <laughs> on corruptionwatch.org.za as well as sending them a whatsapp text on their whatsapp hotline that being 072 now keep your hands clean and